Meeting to order, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, great. Are there any amendments to the agenda? So, I don't have any amendments to the agenda, but I, but I, I told Doug that I would let, I would let you know that he needs to be out of here by five after six, or he needs to be somewhere at five after six. Okay, great. So, so maybe we can just move him up to, yeah, to uh, a and a, and yeah, we'll go from there. That'd be fine. Does that work for you? Okay, perfect. And we have no other visitors, I see, and none on the agenda. So let's move right into the business then, shall we? And uh, the first item will be Mr. Lazarus. Um, I'm doing a, uh, sure. Yeah, they, I, they actually they got it at the last meeting as well. Okay. Yeah. It ended up with 28 businesses participating. So it's pretty much full. <laughs> it's got just about everybody. And um, <clears throat> I'm doing sketches. If you've seen it, then you know what it looks like. It's going to have sketches of every business and, um, uh, and uh, their locations and stuff. And, and then on the back, what I've added, unless you've seen the last one, on the back of it now, I've got uh, a trail map for farm stands. So uh, along Route 7, and then, and then uh, lodging on the back, too. So that's, that's the deal. Uh, I'm planning on publishing it by the 15th of May and distributing it right after that. And um, I've got a list of 20 um, outlets besides the advertisers that will get it. Um, and today someone said, make sure you get it down by the dock, that there's a, a, you know, a place for stuff there. Because it would be really helpful for boaters when they pull in to see, you know, how to get wherever. And so today I just picked up, I, I saved the black sheep and uh, the hired hand for the last. I wanted to make sure that, <laughs> that I had everybody else and then I came. <laughs> and so they're fine now. So that's it. It's pretty much locked in. Um, I've got a, um, uh, a space for the city dock. And, uh, and I spoke to Mel and there's a, a fee for participating in it, um, but he thought it would be worth a shot for me to see if you guys were interested in that. And any questions, obviously. So at the last meeting, the, you know, the city council did, I, I passed this around and there was some discussion and no action was taken uh, in part um, because there really wasn't any information about right. about distribution, right. right? Now, I've got a list of 20 places that I can leave here, um, which are the, uh, in, in addition to the, um, uh, in addition to all of the advertisers distributing it, I've got uh, 20 locations from Charlotte down to uh, Middlebury and from the lake uh, out to, um, uh, to, uh, to New Haven. So you can sort of just pass this around for a look at this. How many are you going to publish? 3,000. 3,000. And you will refill them? Yes, the three season. times. Uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a distribution uh, you know, toward the end of May. Uh, it'll be fully distributed by the latter part of May, and then two months later, and then two months later again. So I'm figuring you know, uh, two month intervals. And the last one would be for the September, October uh, full foliage stuff. I, I could have predicted your trip was going to be exactly what it was. You never go to family on your vacation. Never. <laughs> I thought, okay. I'm a homebody. Yes. I think one of the other questions that was raised was um, what the content specific to Virgens was going to be. I know that you're interested in putting it at the dock, and there, that may have been the placeholder that was in the draft we saw a couple weeks it's ago. Going to be at every one of the restaurants is going to be at the. Uh, I've got it now in. To the art galleries. I mean, when I when you saw it, I was just beginning to get the advertising. Right now, I can tell you that um, it's going to be in for Jim's Laundry, Three Squares, the uh, um, the um, the Cooperative Art Gallery. Uh, I may not have spoken clearly. 
the question that I had was that the mock-up that we saw a couple weeks ago was specific to the dock, I believe. And is that your intent for kind of the Regen's placeholder is to advertise the dock itself? The dock yes, I was thinking that the dock would be what you'd want to advertise. Uh, because uh, that's a, a unique feature that Pregen's offers. You can you can go right out to the lake. It's the only place that you can do that. You can't do that in Middlebury. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, I, I, in, in, if you if you take a look at the new version, I've, I've refined the 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 graphic on that. But the same information. That it's seven miles to the lake. It's free for you know, and there's, there's electricity and stuff at the dock. And so a, a voter would, you know, would think, okay, this is pretty cool. I can, I can go up there. And, mm -hmm. and then they see all the other stuff and they figure, well, we can have lunch, we can go shopping, whatever. Yeah. And the cost would be 350 Yes. Would there be any way of getting an electronic <coughs> copy so that we can post it on our website? Because if you're going to advertise the dock and we got the whole people coming in, I mean, it, it just seems. Yes, I will tell me what you want. Do you want? Uh, do you want the just a PDF of it or whatever? Of the so the <coughs> of it or of both sides of, of everything. Of everything. Yeah, the entire yeah. thing. Yeah, so I can we can put it on our website. Yes, that's a nice idea. Sure. So one of the things I uh, I I knew that these were in the in the uh, lobby at City Hall. And I talked to Amy uh, Amy Bedette Barr about you know if there is anything. You know, relative to so-called Virgin's brochures. And this is a document, uh, this brochure here is done by the Addison County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I don't have any idea how the whole funding of that works, but anyway, this, this is the only document that I'm aware of that is a, that is a handout type document. Uh, in, in talking with Amy, Amy says that really uh, they pay for um, Wi-Fi in the basin. We have we have base we have Wi-Fi capability in the basin. Compliments of, uh, of the generosity, if you will, of Matt Daniels, get, allowing them to have equipment up in his attic. And you know there was a time when we purposely didn't provide Wi-Fi down there because we wanted them to come up town and use the Wi-Fi that's in the downtown. And really. That's not the, the way things are done today. I mean, you know, a boater comes up, they got their cell phone in their hand, and right now, when a boater comes up to the falls and they're searching for uh, a signal, you know, they get the they get the Wi-Fi and it goes to the Virgins Partnerships web website. That's what it does. All right, and so uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. I really. I'm not in this business really about, you know, return on investment, this $350. But as I mentioned at the last meeting, I just personally struggle with using city taxpayer money uh, to pay for, you know, this kind of advertising, if you will. I would look to a Chamber of Commerce or a Virgin's partnership to be doing this type of thing. But if there was a feeling that the boaters are in need of something like this, the, the only funding source that that uh, would seem uh, would uh, might be logical would be you would use money from the Otter Creek Basin Fund. Now, you know there isn't any policy around that fund. What's it for? But it is sitting there. It's not it's not burning a hole in my pocket. But I'm just saying that you know if if you all agree that this kind of expense really shouldn't be coming from taxpayer money, you know there's really only there's really only one bucket i think it's probably a, sh a real stretch to think that this is an economic development strategy and and eligible for water tower funds so that's the only bucket so the real question is whether or not you know it whether or not it's appropriate for the city to be in in this business or whether or not this type of thing should be totally funded by individual uh, individual businesses <coughs> David, did you have any questions? You brought you had a question at the last meeting, and I'm yeah, I, I had a couple. I mean, um, I, I'd make a statement first. I mean, typically things like this are funded if it's a municipal entity that's doing it. It's typically an economic development group. Um, so there's that. But question I had, you'd, you'd mentioned a, um, publishing three thousand. Is that three thousand total or three thousand three times? No, it's 3,000 total. 3, I'm printing it on very expensive paper stock, and, okay. uh, and um, you know, uh, my feeling is that <clears throat> uh, the distribution range is, 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 um, is from Charlotte to Middlebury. 
And there are publications that are, there's a, a map that goes statewide, okay, uh, a glossy map that goes statewide. You can drive right by for gems and never even see it's here uh, if you're on Route 7. What's needed is to alert people that are in, uh, that are within a half hour of Regenz. If someone's on the other side of the mountain, I took a look at that other map, and it doesn't really indicate enough to make you feel it's worth a visit. It's just a little spot on the map. And so this, if you, you know, if you look at it, 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 it's intriguing. It's like, what is this place? You know, I've got all these drawings of architecture and stuff, and so it's to intrigue people that are within a short drive of Virginia to say, all right, let's go over and check that out. So uh, the 3,000 um, would, would be, uh, I think, a reasonable number to, uh, you know, to, to you know, make that effective. Um, and it does cost quite a bit to print. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the paper stock is the thing that costs a lot. Um, um, I spoke to Amy today, and I told her that what they can have is, they can have the right, I'm asking them for a little support also for the project, and she thought that since I've gotten just about all the restaurants and shops and everything and galleries in the town, that it might behoove the partnership to get their name on it and help out a little. And I said, you can then print as many of these as you want above and beyond that and use them for whatever purpose. You can, you can provide them to bicycle tours, bus tours, whatever you want. So I've created the art, I've created the piece, and then it's just a printing cost. And, and if they want to work something out where they print more of them, fine. And so she said that that was something that she would look into. Yeah, so the partnership, the partnership uh, at this point, uh, although it was discussed that they would participate financially in this, at this point there is no financial participation from the Virgins Partnership. That's where it stands today. Obviously, you know, that can change. It can always change, but I'm just telling you that they, their board uh, voted uh, recently to not uh, fund this exercise. So, you know, to me, you know, we're, uh, you know, if you look at what the partnership does, they have various committees, one of which is, is promotion. And, you know, if they're, if they're not seeing that, uh, you know, I just, okay. it seems awkward. It just seems awkward to me. Can I, can yeah. I interject this? Uh, Bill Benton was the person that promoted I should do this in the first place. He wasn't at the meeting when the vote was taken. And, uh, and he thought this was a great idea. And Amy also, there were just some questions that were raised, two of them. One, um, they weren't sure that I could fill it with advertising. In other words, they weren't sure I was gonna get to the finish line. Well, I'm at the finish line now. And number two, they really hadn't seen it in its fully developed state as to how it's gonna look and everything. So they were, when there are questions, questions cause people to say no. If, you, if, if you've got too many questions, the answer is no in general. Uh, the questions have been answered uh, and Amy said she will return to the partnership and <coughs> suggest that they involve themselves, particularly since I've gotten all of the places in town that are tourist oriented. It's going to look funny if the partnership wasn't involved in this in some way. It'll just look odd. Since they aren't doing anything um, like this, it's like, well then, okay, someone it came out and you, you weren't part of it. So she said, that's a good case to make. I'm going to go to the partnership and see now that this has all changed and you're almost done, maybe they want to do it now. So that's, that's the, you know, that's where it stands. Great. I, I think that, um, I, I mean, I'd say one thing. I mean, you're to be commended for, you know, taking the initiative to do this. I, I like the design and I like the layout. And um, Virgen's has, has, a certain level of brand equity, almost by default. And we've struggled for years and years and years developing a cohesive brand image for the city. So I, I think that anything that's a point of differentiation is, is a good thing relative to some of the other things that are out there relative to, there's all kinds of maps. This you know, like I, 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 I understand that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, that that's a good thing. I, I think that um, I think that your number is low relative to the the distribution piece of it in terms of three thousand. Um, I think that 
I, I own businesses here in Virginia years ago. I'm pretty familiar with the advertising piece of it. Um, the number seems low in, in terms of distribution, particularly during the tourist season. Um, if you run out, are you going to print more? Well, if I, if I run out in the middle of the summer, I could probably you know, print another 1,000. But um, I'm not going to print 10,000. I just don't have the money for it. Um, uh, you know, so it all depends, you know, if they come, if they, look, it, this is the first year. If, it, if they are enormously successful, I will print more, and then next year, everyone will know how successful it was, and I'll just include that in the fee for uh, a larger run, and I'll have a better idea of how many would be needed. I mean, uh, it's hard to know which of the locations will move, you know, uh, the most number of these. It's hard to really know that. So what you do is you go through a year, and then you say, okay, this one, 100 people picked it up. This one, 300 people picked it up. This one, 50 people picked it up. You begin to have a sense of where it ought to be. Uh, so this is a, I would like this to be an annual, and I'd like it to be successful, and uh, that everyone's happy with it. So uh, this is just to get it moving. Excuse me, what is the fund balance on the big assembly? Right now, last <laughs> uh, the, the uh, special projects and capital. Yep. So if you, uh, the, the Otter Creek Basin Fund, it has $6,163.32 in there. Where did that come from? Donate all of it, right, Joan? That's where that money is. We yeah. collect about $2,000 a year, uh, roughly. 15 first, and then up to 17. So it's been four years. We've, we've had four seasons, apparently, down there. As long as we got the money in the right bucket, uh, that's, that's, that's the sole source of that, that line item. Also, you know, if it's going to be online on your website and people are going to come to Virgins, that in effect increases circulation because they can see it online and get an idea of the whole thing, you know. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we allocate $350 to support the uh, advertisement in the Virgins map. But I would say, Doug, respectfully, that pursuant to what Mel said at the end of his comments, that this should really be something that's paid for by the advertisers. So I wouldn't expect or I would ex antici wouldn't anticipate in, uh, supporting this on an annual basis. No, but the thing is, if this thing goes well, then, uh, then second year, the financial end of it would change. I mean, it could, the, the, uh, the partnership may decide that maybe, uh, you know, they want to have a whole different arrangement with it. I think the key is whether it's going to be popular. And, um, you know, I, I think what Dave said is, is, is what really got me thinking. It had to look different. Absolutely. It must not look like another generic mm -hmm. piece. Yep. And, and Virgins is a historical town, and it's a town that's got character in it. And so that's why I designed it with artwork and, and stuff. And Great. Stuff. So we have a motion on the floor, and we... Have a second. Is there any further discussion? I want to confirm. Did you say funding from the Odyssey case? Yes, Joe. Yep. Thank you. Any further discussion? I think I would like to, if, if we can, put just a little note the the free Wi-Fi at the at the falls, maybe in a little. If it, if yeah, we're sure. depicting the falls, yeah. just put that there. I don't think it would hurt anything. You can we can also put down contributions. Uh, you know. Uh, Donation free, box. free uh, uh, donations accepted, or you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Instead no of saying free, actually, it shouldn't say free. It should say by donation. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's better. Leave the word free now. Right. All right. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Thank you very much. Good luck. To the appointment of, to the. Oh, we haven't done the minutes yet. That's right. Thank That's you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all right. That's because. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion and a second? Any discussion? I found no errors. 
This isn't good. Two in a row. This isn't good, Joan. Two in a row. I think you're not reading them. <laughs> I no. I I I I'm reading them. Well, Lynn, what I mentioned at the last <laughs> meeting is that it really shows that the 13 hours that Joan and I put into <laughs> reviewing these yeah. minutes certainly was. And, yeah. And yeah, these really are quite good. lengthy again. So. I know. Yeah. I've got to learn how to shut my mouth. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I go on. Uh, and go on. Okay, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of accepting them as presented? Aye. 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 All right, no opposed. Oh, and Lynn is abstaining, thank you. And there, I think, are probably no other citizen comments now that Doug has left, so. Now let's move back to the appointment to the Revolving Loan Fund Committee, which is an item that we deferred to tonight's meeting because Lynn was not present at the last. So one thing, I, I did read our policy, uh, uh, Matt, and it's not like we were stretching our policy. There's no, it doesn't state in there when this is supposed to be done uh, about the city council. It doesn't say that it's done in March. You know, maybe it should, uh, certainly make some make some sense so anyway we're not outside our policy uh but there lynn who was last appointed her her designation it ended with the term that ran out on town meeting day all right and so really you cannot assume that 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 automatically goes to her because she was reelected. No, no, don't be offended by that, Lynn. But uh, anyway, it just doesn't. So the point is, is the city council pursuant to that policy does need to designate somebody from this board. And obviously, if it is somebody that just got elected, they're appointed to this the way it reads. It's for their term. And so if it's somebody that just got elected, that appointment is a two-year appointment. And if it is somebody who who is up for re-election in 2019, it is only until March of 2019. But I will tell you that I would, I would like to get this group, I'm not on this committee, Joan is on the committee. Uh, uh, the, the revolving loan fund has $77,000 in it today, and I really, I really am anxious to get this committee filled and, and have an organizational meeting and uh, begin marketing this fund and reviewing the, the policies. My recollection, Lynn, was that you said you would continue unless someone else were interested. Yes, I would love to. You would love to continue. Great. <laughs> so somebody needs, somebody to, needs to make a, make a motion I'll then. Make a motion and a Thank second? You. Second. Any discussion? All these in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. You'll be pleased to know that the pay is the same. Yeah. Four for that. But the benefits are better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Designation of Green Up Day Coordinator. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Jeff, me. Uh, last, in October, the board appointed uh, Lowell Bertrand to be our uh, Green Up Day Coordinator, but he has confirmed that he is not going to be able to fulfill his duty uh, in that position, uh, right? Can. You can? Yeah. Well, that's the only reason why we put this on here. No, I said I will not be present at, at the, the next council meeting. I'll be back in time for this. Never mind. Wow. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was asking you where are the bags and stuff. We no. thought you're going to be on a cruise during No, the I'm, I'm, oh. I'm okay. back. False alarm. motion required. False alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Continuing right along to the city limits liquor license and live entertainment license. Excuse me, um, Deputy Mayor. Yes. Uh, the owner of the property at 1012 Green Street is my employer, just by way of clarification. Thank you very much. I'm assuming that everyone has read the memo from the chief. So I will uh, tell you that uh, after the last meeting, uh, Brett Ward did call me because he had heard uh, that the, the city council had not acted on his liquor license application. And I explained to him that, uh, that it was deferred to this meeting. And he said that, because uh, I, uh, uh, and Joan called and left a message uh, with him that he was expected to come to the next meeting or to let him know I'm not after I said to return my call it's regarding the 2018 okay. liquor license 
All right. So he didn't call Joan, he called me. Uh, and anyway, I explained to him that, that it was deferred until tonight. And he said that he had a vacation planned and uh, you know didn't know if he needed to uh, uh, cancel some of his vacation plans to come to the meeting. And uh, I told him uh, that you don't necessarily need to do that on my account because I, I really, as I mentioned at the last meeting, I really don't know exactly what my role is as it relates to liquor licenses. I'm in part, I'm kind of out of the loop. Uh, businesses go to Joan and Melissa, they fill out their paperwork, the liquor licenses come to the city council uh, and the city council acts on them. Uh, but having said that, uh, George, uh, Chief Merkel works for me and if he has you know, some problems with a, a business, particularly those that are serving alcohol, he brings that, that information to me and, and I wanna be able to communicate that with you as Liquor Control Commissioner. So uh, at my request, uh, uh, George put together the, a memo which was in your packet. And so to me, your, your, uh, your options are to, uh, you know, Thank you for the memo and act on his license. Uh, uh, I will tell you that uh, it's my understanding that if you don't renew a license, uh, to not renew a license without going through some due process revocation process or something, I would, I would guard against doing that because I think that even though the license does expire at the end of April, I. I I really think that if you, uh, it, it's the same as suspending a license without without any due process. So I would suggest that you not uh, head down that path uh, this evening. Uh, but I, uh, so the, to me your, your options are, you've got this memo, you can act on his license tonight, uh, or uh, because he was unable to come to this meeting, if you'd like to meet with, with him, in advance of uh, acting on his license, then the matter could be deferred until uh, until the next meeting, and that would be my recommendation. Is I, I you know, I think that uh, Brent, Brett, given the fact that you have this memo, I think that Brett should have an opportunity to come to the city council and and talk about the content of that memo. I agree with that, but in general, can a liquor license be like strings attached to it? Like, well, we can give you, we can renew the liquor license, but if there's another <coughs> violation of serving somebody of this nature, then it's done. Uh, you would have to go through a a uh, a suspension process. I don't think that the, you cannot pre-determine that. I don't think, okay. Mark. I think you would. Uh, and 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 let's say uh, I'm 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 hoping uh, I just want the expectations to be clear, all right. And I'm not the one that really gives the expectations. It's the it's the city council that gives the expectations to your your licensees. And so I think that that I think you know based on this memorandum, I you know I I, I think it is there's sufficient evidence here uh, based on the memorandum that you know. The expectations need to be made clear. What would happen? Actually, not what would happen, but rather, is there sufficient time, since our next council meeting is on the 24th, and his license is valid through the 30th? Is there a sufficient time in those six days to take action? Should we decide that there needs to be some sort of hearing, for example, regarding that? suspension of his license should we determine at that time that's the action we want to take uh, my feeling is is today's april 10th you have this memorandum he has an existing license if uh if you are want desiring to in essence separate the issues mm -hmm. uh you know but one relative to the fact that you, let's say it's, 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 you know, I mean, this is the time of the year that 
you know, that you deal with licenses and it's a time of year that I'm going to have a little more discussion with George about these types of things, but you, you could get these memos in, in October just as easily as you could get them in, in, sure. uh, in April. Okay. So I guess the point is, is that given this memo, if, if you got this memo in October, I think you got to ask yourself, what would you do with it? All right. Uh, and you, you might simply invite them in. You might move towards, you know, some kind of action. You know, you, 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 uh... And can you give a license conditionally? That's kind of... Uh, that's, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I don't see how you can, you know, they're... they're... You can act as uh, liquor control commissioners when you see a violation, and then you would have to suspend. Like, he was issued three citations or whatever they call them, and um, and there's um, like penalties involved. Your first violation, your second violation, your third violation. I would think, based on the memo, that liquor control was going to suspend the license. He had three violations. They issued him citations for, and it takes time for liquor control. But they've issued the citations, and we would get a notice at the city that he's been issued citations and if there's a one day suspension, a 10 day suspension or a 30 day suspension. He's had a seven day suspension before, but it just doesn't happen instantly. This is relatively new, it takes more than two weeks to go through their process. That may be coming, maybe they're just, um, dollar penalties they can pay fifteen hundred dollar fine in lieu of well, a suspect the ticket for five hundred dollars each that's what it says for george's memo right for over service yeah that's what those tickets were issued for well i would like to i would like him to be here i like that option i agree with you jeff and i'd also appreciate it john i don't know if you know somebody at liquor control if you could reach out to them and to find out where they are with their process okay, uh, prior to the 24th. I'd like to know what their intents yeah. are. And we, we could attempt to get uh, Jay Clark, I believe is his name. Uh, we could attempt to get him to attend the meeting as well. You know, obviously we can't compel him to be here, but right. we could certainly reach out to uh, reach out to him. Liquor control? Yeah. 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 Easy yeah. Okay, I didn't know who you were. Yep. I All right. I, I believe I got the right name. Yeah. 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 Okay. So right, we'll leave it on the agenda for next meeting. Okay. Perfect. Any other comments on that subject before we move forward? Great. Amendments to the personnel policy, which I think we all received in its current final format today. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the things that's okay, uh, you know, Rennie obviously, you know, sent an email uh, out to folks about his, you know, his review. Uh, and this this is not a this isn't a race to me, uh, but I will I will tell you I I I, uh, I don't want it. Although it's not a race, if it was, I don't want it to be a marathon. All right, because let me. Uh, so one of the things I think that Mark and I are 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 pretty close, if you will, with the language. You know, there's Mark's done some nice wordsmithing here to make it read a little better. He's polished it. I thought I was the best polisher, but Mark is a pretty good polisher when it comes to this thing. Anyway, I, I, uh, uh, what I would like to do, uh, unless if, if there's anybody other than Mark uh, <laughs> on the city council that has any comments about uh, any version, I've sent, I've sent out probably three, I think. Uh, anyway, if anybody has any comments, you know, I would uh, individually, I would like to have them by Friday. All right. Mark and I, uh, we, we, you know, we might be able to get our work done by Friday. There is, there's, you know, uh, there's just a little bit more communication uh, that Mark and I need to have. Uh, but, um, and of course, if you've received three copies, all my department heads have received three copies too. Right. And as I mentioned to Rennie, you know, uh, in Rennie's email, as you saw, you know, he really does not want this thing rushed, nor do I, all right? And if it means 
you know, sending out, uh, I think really the discussion or the exchange that Mark and I have been having, it doesn't have anything to do with really holidays and benefits or anything. It's really about process and, and the like. So, uh, uh, so anyway, if I could ask for everybody else to get back to me by Friday individually, uh, Mark and I will continue this work and hopefully get uh, uh, get a version out to you uh, a week in advance of the next meeting in hopes that uh, you know something will be put in place. I, I uh, uh, you know obviously it's you know it hasn't been reviewed in in well over in 13 years a really a thorough review and I can tell you a lot of this really deals with problems that Joan has as our paymaster, all right? So we, we want to make things easy for our paymaster, easy for our employees, and, and there's some, a lot of efficiency that goes in with this, uh, you know, with this document. So we really are anxious in that regard to get this behind us. Um, the, uh, the one thing uh, that, uh, that you, that I, that I have thought about and it deals with accrued uh, vacation. I gave a sheet in your packet of all of our accrued leave time and the way that uh, vacation time is awarded is awarded on your anniversary date and one of the problems that we have when you when you convert to earning uh, earning vacation time on a weekly basis uh, there is a transition period, and so let's say that somebody's anniversary was last August. When you do a transition and and calculate what they they really earn under this new formula on day one, it pops them over the 200, and and we really don't want anybody to be penalized, if you will, or lose time because of a new policy. So uh, the next version will probably have a parentheses. Of the, of the maximum 200 hours uh, effective June 30th, 2019. So there really is, there is a date out there that we, that we will get to so that it does absolutely stop at the 200 hours. And I, I, that's the only thing, I, I think I fixed the Saturday, Sunday thing for about holidays and stuff, but um, uh, so anyway, that's my, that's my goal is, is hopefully Mark and I will be able to get this uh, uh, get this finished up and out to you uh, uh, in, a, in a week. So was the last copy you sent today, is that our, I don't have that in my email. Uh, or was it? There's going to be another something? one anyway, Lynn. Okay, so. I'll just, <laughs> yeah, I'll just give you yeah. the latest one. <laughs> okay. Yep. Great. Now, are you getting yeah. feedback from staff on it? You know, I'm not. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, part of it, uh, you know, um, I don't know why I'm not there there really isn't any you know what I'm oh, doing that. there really isn't mm -hmm. a change in mm -hmm. in uh, in in benefits you know one of the things um, I think relative to the police I, you know the fact that the holidays the eight-hour holidays it worked great when everybody was working five eight-hour days but that isn't what the police do and so we've had we've been working around this mess for years Joan yeah, about holidays and they have to charge off two hours to vacation time yeah. and it's mm -hmm. so then they're feeling a little robbed it's yeah. no one else and, and, and they are you know so but one of the hour thing, for yeah. hour it's even yeah right, through every department so that's what's fair is yeah. that everyone's given the and, same. and and doing vacation on a on a on an accrual formula every week, all right, you you know, it works much better for employees. You got employees, I mean, the, the way of having your vacation, you earn it on your anniversary day and it has to be used up before the next anniversary day. And then, and then there's a provision where I allow them to roll it over. You know, somebody sends me an email, I have to approve it, give a copy to Joan. Joan puts in a personnel file. We're doing a lot of work for really nothing, all right? And, uh, uh, so I think it's 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 really employees aren't gaining anything from that, but it's just a better it's a better system and and gives uh, you know all employees greater flexibility with their vacation time as opposed to having to pay attention to their anniversary date. So or me having to pay attention to what 
like I missed it by a week. And I should have had vacation last week. I'm sorry, I missed that. It'll be on this week. Feel free to go. <laughs> Don't put the negative. It'll catch up. Okay. So Any other comments? <laughs> Moving on to the conference room project, which is looking great, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, if you haven't been in, we've got uh, the sheetrock is, it's all insulated. Sheetrock is up. Uh, the electricity prime. prime, you know, one coat of prime has been done. Uh, second coat of primer goes on uh, tomorrow. So it's, it's, it's certainly getting there. Uh, the reason why conference room project lobby doors is on the agenda, I have mentioned I really can't remember if I've mentioned this at city council meetings. I know I've, maybe I have, and I'm sure I've mentioned it, you know, when people have stopped in about my idea of having glass doors on the back side of the lobby for a number of reasons, one of which the current double doors, they, they currently don't lock. Uh, there's a three quarter inch gap uh, in the bottom of them. Uh, um, could, they could use a good cleaning, all right? And so, um, it's not that security is absolutely required for those double double doors because all that's going to be in there is a table and a bunch of chairs and some some hangings on the on the wall, but there might be reason for that to be secured. So that was part of the idea about the glass about the glass doors, and of course I, you know I I got in touch with Desiree's and and I, I knew that this was not going to be cheap and Desiree's finally did make it uh, to the office and measured up and the cost of of a 48 inch wide glass door with two 18 inch glass side panels in a metal frame installed is fifty three hundred dollars all right you know I I don't know if I was guessing four thousand or hoping four thousand but I knew it wasn't going to be cheap all right and so uh, so that's the price tag on that you know, I still like the idea, uh, but anyway, on my on my way to work uh, a week or so ago, it dawned on me that the the city really didn't put those two doors in. Uh, they actually were put in by the Friends of Virgin's Opera House, uh, and I knew they cost a lot of money. And so, uh, I'm glad I thought about that because you know, you know, once they go to the transfer station, it's tough to dig them out of the dig them out of the. Uh, building debris. So anyway, I sent an email out to the Friends of Virgin's Opera House about that, and they really feel from an aesthetic standpoint that they do not like the idea. Uh, I don't know that they've had some formal vote, but there certainly is some feeling that um, there is a aesthetics issue with having a glass uh, doors there. And uh, so, uh, I, I, you know, I have no interest in in, I have no interest in, in battling it. I still think it's a decent idea, but I, I, you know, the fact that the, the Opera House installed those doors, I, I, you know, I don't know that we have to get their permission, but I just, I don't, uh, you know, I don't feel like this is a, any kind of a deal breaker for the project. So that's why it's on the, the agenda with a couple of stars, you know. So I do know that they, the opera, friends of the Opera House are exploring what other options might be available, including rehabbing the doors, uh, refinishing them, fixing them. I know that they have been fixed more than once and that the fixes have always failed. Um, I would just like to say that I'm personally very much in favor of glass doors and opening up the city offices. Um, I, I think it's an argument about aesthetics and we will all have different opinions, but I like what it does for the city offices, personally. I agree with you. Also, as this is going to be an active conference room, I think having, giving a visitor the opportunity to see that there's a, there's a meeting taking place or there's a conference taking place and not coming through those doors and springing onto 20 people, I think you know, the glass is, is gonna go a long ways towards accomplishing that goal, Jeff. Funding, Mel? So I know we were still within that ten grand. He okay. still got it. If you're in budget, then yeah, I, right. I mean, really, I mean, the, the work has been done there. It's been done by primarily Matt Matt Crowley, who's on our payroll, and, right. and, and you know, it's not and like. When were those doors installed? I wasn't working for the city of time. It's going to say two thousand. I'd say you know two thousand. So they've been there a bit. Yeah. And they're more residential than. They are. Well, they're supposed to be fireproof. 
that was why they took the nice old ones down and put these up. It's because they're supposed to be fireproof. Yeah, which but doesn't apply any walls. longer because the building sprinkler. You know, and I, I really question. You know, I don't know if they ever. Those are long. Transfers, Those are transfers, transfers, transfers. Yeah, yeah, long gone. Yeah. The old doors actually yeah. swung both ways. It was kind of like a waitress coming out of the coming out of the uh, So in the defense kitchen. It, it, to express a little bit from the op friends of the Opera House, I know that they have contacted Norman LeBeff to see what other options might be available. Um, Can you do something with glass and still be aesthetically interested to well, it's the, cost more money I know I'm just yeah that's kind of what we're waiting to see okay. although yeah. I think I I have a sense that they really like those doors <clears throat> when you come into the come into the lobby of City Hall from okay. outside come into the lobby yep. there's a double set of double doors yeah, yeah, yeah. all okay, right those doors. Uh, those doors you know for you know when for years and years, there was just doors there that that swung both ways. Okay, double hinged doors or whatever the whatever the terminology is. All right, and and uh, yeah, they had a window. Very simple. You know, they had a window up there. And and when the opera house went through its renovations, uh, the whole fire safety issue came up. It's my understanding that those that there was a lot of discussion about those doors and the need for them to be fire rated. I think that the doors are fire rated. The doors, doors. however, they, they they yeah the installation uh, you know is 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 far from. But having said that, according to uh, according to Josh Max Maxim, who is our the person that covers this area with the state, they aren't required to be fire rated any longer because the building is completely sprinkler. All right, so don't need to wor worry about that. So really, there's, you know, you know, security. I think that there, I think there is some logic behind having glass doors there. But you know, I, I, uh, you know, I don't. City owns the building, but I, I think that we need to be, you know, I feel that we have to cooperate to some degree here with our, to, with our tenant. You know. I'm you know? wondering if, um, and just to clarify, I'm no longer on the board, but know everybody on. If. Um, if there were glass doors with a curtain that, you know, if they had a show or something they didn't want to aesthetically have people looking into city offices, they would be able to close those curtains and maybe that might be a solution or shutters or something. <coughs> so, yeah. Well, what, what they, what you see in there, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's ugly, you know. Oh, I, I, I don't either. You know, it's, it's. Uh, they might think differently. It certainly, I actually think glass doors would, in my opinion, would look better. But that's just me. Well, I think we're trying to build a city office that we all want to be proud of. So I don't think we need to hide it behind doors. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll see what the office comes up with and. Look at some point, I got to put. It has to be yeah. done yeah. Yeah. this week. You're, it doesn't have to be done this week, but close. you know, if they're going to be, you know, at some point, I got to do carpeting, and and right. you know, when you, yep. when you list what needs to be done and when, there's a sequence to this thing. So, so uh, I got caught up in the middle of this a little bit today, and sort of what we determined was that we probably would take no action tonight. Um, however, I I would say that they should either have some. An alternative for us at the next meeting, or we be prepared to take action. Okay. You know that gives Norman two weeks to respond to us. Can you uh, do you have the dimensions of the door, the the hole, the, the side lights, and the door? Uh, I I would I think that it's seven feet. All right, yeah, you know it's so like I say, if you have a uh, right now. Uh, you know, I really feel like those doors are more than 36 inches. I think there's, I think there's more than uh, than six feet. I feel like they're bigger than than 36. I think they're 40 inches. 40 inches. I think they okay. Are. Yeah. So, so 80, 80 inches. So if you had a 48 inch door, all right, there wouldn't be double doors. It'd be just one door, one door with fixed panels on the side. That's that's what I had Roger Desabre's spec out for me. Uh, I would think some decorative. 
not sheetrock, but decorative paneling on each side of this glass door so it bring a little bit of historic look to it and putting the glass doors in would be gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I think it's as simple as that, you know, it's right. a compromise on both sides. So the, the, the door itself is a glass door, but then the two panels that Mel's referring to would, would not be glass. No, it would be I something saying, more, well, or to the outside of the, of that. On the even. outside of the door, so. What well, no, no, the, the trim stays. The trim does that, stay. That trim, that oh. trim, that stays. Hmm. You know, oh, okay. Right, there's, that's. Right, the new whole the whole unit will fit within yeah. the trim. You have to oh, pull you, you right. pull yeah. off the you know the trim. The trim is about this wide. It's made up of two pieces. You pull the inside piece out, pull those doors out of there, put the steel frame in, put the put that trim. So that trim that you would see around there would would remain. Okay. Okay. So we'll give them two weeks to give us another option. Okay. Great. Report on the activity of debit credit card payment option. Joan and I both thought that, that when we uh, uh, said, uh, and we'll get back to you in six months and tell you how this thing is going. And uh, so Joan and I talked about it and I went back and looked at the minutes and, and it actually, it was actually three months. So uh, anyway, it was, uh, we, we, we instituted this and in, because I really had some, I think it's great, you know, the idea like, oh, credit card, people come to you, got the credit card, okay, fine. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Joan was able to find a, uh, a, a system out there where anybody who uses a credit card you know, they have to pay the fee. I mean, obviously, credit card fees. Uh, you know, David, you know, you know them better than you know them better than me. But they're substantial, and it's like, let's say, if it's two to three percent. Well, if somebody's going to pay a two thousand dollar property tax bill, then the credit card company is going to skim two or three percent. I mean, I don't, we don't have money to cover that kind of thing. So the only way to do it is so that the the to have us have it set up with a credit card, whereby the 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 person using the card. Get pays the fee, and that's what we've set up. All right. So obviously, there's no, been no expense to us with this system. I will tell you that uh, the way that we reconcile the checking account, uh, you know, we have so, such huge numbers of staff here. I mean, Joan handles all of the money coming in. Uh, I spend I spend the money, and Melissa does a little bit of both. Uh, you know, really. I mean, there's bills that she pays, and then she handles money. Relative to reconciling checking account, I reconcile a checking account. You know, Joan certainly knows how to reconcile a checking account, but I knew it was going to be a little problem because if somebody uses a credit card the last day of the month, you don't have the money. And our system, uh, we knew that it, we knew that this probably wasn't going to be. Uh, we're we we're going to end up with some problems. All right. And I, if you saw the activity here, I will tell you that we're getting some activity and the amount of activity, uh, and in particular, the activity that occurs towards the end of the month is absolutely manageable. You know, I, you know, Joan can produce a report and says, you know, these three birth certificates were sold on the 31st of, of March, and so they're not going to show up. Uh, and so when we reconcile, you know, we always, you know, we, we, we reconcile not in balance now. We always reconciled in balance to the penny. And now we don't reconcile to the penny. Uh, we reconcile to an amount that we know it is due to credit card, all right? Sometimes we aren't able to reconcile because somebody bounces a check or somebody pays with Canadian money. There's little anomalies that we do run into, but it really has been, it's been no issue. So, um, uh, so sorry that we're a little late. Uh, it's it it seems to be working fine. I think people love it. Um, I've done three more since this report of three when I did the report, but they're little things like they call up and can I pay my winter parking ticket that they got and I just want to pay it before I lose it and dog licenses that didn't work so great. Because when you have to load it, load it in the dog yeah, license, no load it in yeah. cash receipts, and then go on PayGov and actually do the transaction, it tied us up a little. But the convenience for people, they were calling us over the phone. Can I renew my dog over the phone with my card? Yep, one moment, please. <laughs> yeah, DMV can be, it's, it's these things that we do. I mean, if we're selling a birth certificate, it's really no, no big deal. You come in, 
ten dollars credit card whatever they pay some kind of fee where e it's easy things like D dmv some of the money goes to the dmv and some of the money we keep as a fee uh, uh dog licenses it goes in three different places land recording goes in three you know it's those kinds of things that you know there's kind of too many pieces to a really small transaction but we're able to you know we're able to get get through it okay I'm so glad we're we fine offer it. I think that's that people appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Great. So you may not ever hear from us again about that. No, Beautiful. Actually. Beautiful. That's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Report of the city manager search committee. I guess that's me. Uh, we have we have received a number of applications. The po the posting remains open through Sunday through the fifteenth. Uh, I can tell you on the two websites, which I'm able to track, and in other words, they provide numbers, we've gotten over 500 hits just on those two websites, which is, I think, really fantastic. Additionally, the ad just came out in last week's Independent on Thursday. It will be in this week's Independent on Thursday as well, and it is online with the Independent. Uh, it's on the VLCT website, et cetera, et cetera. The committee is meeting next Tuesday face-to-face. -face. Lynn has been gone, so we've been meeting by phone. We'll be meeting next week. Um, after the posting has closed, we'll review some job descriptions. But our primary focus of that meeting will be to develop what we see as the process for interviewing. Uh, we intend to present questions that we are going to suggest the council use in the interview process. And so all of that you will see at the next meeting. Yes, sir. How many applicants, sir? How so many far? applicants so far? We have eight. Okay. Any other questions? All in all, I'm actually really pleased. Uh, we've gotten a, a number of um, email inquiries that have actually prevented, I think, some serial candidates from applying, which is kind of nice. I find that to be rather respectful. And I will also say that there has been interest from across the country. Two of our applicants are actually Californians. So. That's about all I have. Any questions? Sure. City manager's report. Sure. The uh, budget report. Uh, I, I I think I talked a lot at the last meeting about the budget, so I'm I'm I really there isn't anything new to newer to report here. Uh, I will tell you uh, your the report I'm looking at is a little bit uh, is certainly newer than the one that got distributed, but. Uh, I ran this report at the end of my day, and I know that Joan has already uh, done the sewer billing. And so my report shows that that billing, the way that it works is the, the billing actually hits user fees. So on page six of your budget report uh, for sewer fund user fees, we budgeted $652,000. My report shows that we have billed 637148 and so the difference is something short of fifteen thousand dollars and so joan you have um you build for march usage okay and which means from a budget standpoint she will be billing for april may and june uh, and those monthly the monthly billings i think are around 11 grand or 11 12 grand and so you can see that um, that we we are in decent shape here uh, on the on the revenue uh, side of the sewer fund, and uh, uh, I I won't be suggesting any sewer increase. Uh, just just so you so you know. <laughs> when did we? Past that last increase October. in October. Yeah. So this year, this year was actually three. If you passed it in October, so you had three quarters, three quarters, if you will. Obviously, we have a bunch of commercial users that get bills monthly, but any, anyway, three quarters of that is, was at the uh, was at the new rate. 
So uh, you know you could look at the the increase and 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 one fourth of that increase is going to um, uh, from a budget standpoint. So it appears as if the current rates are going to um, get us you know upwards to you know six hundred and seventy thousand or something something like that. So. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, is it, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Matt. Sure. Um, we anticipate the police department budget is going to go over this year. Correct? I, I do. Yeah. I, uh, I, you know, I just, you know, I actually had an officer who just recently was in the hospital uh, with some heart trouble, and so, uh, so I have one officer down, and uh, obviously we. Uh, we have uh, only one currently, we only have one uh, part-time officer, but we are soon appointing a second part-time officer, which certainly will, will, that helps because if you don't have a part-time officer, if somebody else has to fill a shift, it's at, over, it's at overtime uh, rate. So uh, with that news, that's not good news, Matt, that makes the numbers go in the, in the other direction. So, um, uh, you know, when you see, uh, you know, when you see overtime at 91.95%, I will tell you that the Memorial Day Parade is a hit. When an employee gets sick, it's a hit, all right? So that's going to go over. Uh, relative to straight time, we're at 74%, and if you compare that to George's wages, we're about 4% under, all right? So we're 4% of 285 all right, but we're going to go, let's say we go over by 10% of, of 25,000, all right? The, the 4% of 285 is a much greater number than, than 4% of 25,000. So, you know, I, I, uh, I, I'm not going to be predicting that we're going to be under budget. I'd love, love it, but I, I'm, I'm, this is going to be a race to the finish. I can, I can see that already. I guess my question is, is there nothing discretionary that can be adjusted in the last quarter to bring him closer to, to being on budget? Uh, I, under, I, understand, yep. I understand where it's coming from, Mel, but I'm just yeah. wondering, is there any, you know, what are we doing? We've got a brand new building. We're, you know, already $200 over budget for the year. So what are we doing in building and maintenance? What are we doing in training and dues that we're over? So is there any sure. guidance that we can give Chief Merkel that discretionary spending he, uh, should be kept to a minimum? He gets this budget. Uh, he, I send him this budget, <laughs> all right? <laughs> and he, 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 uh, he knows that, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, if they need photocopier paper, you got to grab photocopier paper. But that's this is not the time to... You know, be be ordering any vest or any any. There really isn't anything there, so he's aware of that. So the so-called discretionary spending, I think it's really when George puts his budget together. You, uh, I share this memo with, with with you about things, equipment needs that they need for the the year. All those purchases have been, have been made. All right, so so it's not like we're uh, uh, there's we're expecting anything else. So. Uh, we we may we may make it uh, you know but uh, but yeah building maintenance I know I end up with a you know the building uh, for the first year it was under warranty all right so there's no cost and now all of a sudden well something happened to the furnace and some and so you, we we end up with a little electrical problem that occurs so uh, you know I it, it's going to take us a little while to really get a get a handle on that because it's. I don't want to say it's like a used car, but you know your expenses are going to go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a big fan of buying two thousand dollar service contracts. I'm I'm a pay as you go kind of a guy, mm -hmm. you know. So so we're go we will continue to continue to watch it. <laughs> it's, okay. You know, you, know you. you I will. You know, one of the things you can see uh, the administrative assistant. You know she's you know she's really doing her thing, and we've we've spent seven hundred and thirty eight dollars, and I've I've told George you know don't don't burn her out. I mean really it's it isn't just the sixteen hundred. This thing is this is this is working good uh, by having her over there. You know she works what she works she knows what she's doing yeah. And I think we're, she only works six seven hours a week. You know not even every week. You yeah. know it's yeah. so he's very happy. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's good. I can't help can't. Uh, <laughs> All I can do is ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other, uh, I'll, I'll move on to uh, the other sheet. I had it here because somebody had a question about. Uh, uh, one of the things I did, I, I usually only give you fund eight and nine, and I thought, you know what, I should, I should, I should give you six and seven. I don't think I'd normally give you that. This thing actually goes all the way to one, just so you know. There's, there's, I keep track of the rest of it too. But anyway. Uh, so the community development fund, that's, that's actually our revolving loan fund. Uh, I don't know why it's, why it's called community development fund, but it isn't. But anyway, so that's, the re that's real cash available for lending. Uh, the Green Mountain Power Co-op Agreement Fund is, uh, uh, is available for uh, base and improvements with permission from Green Mountain, Green Mountain Power. One of the numbers in here that really does concern me is to only have $15,000 in sewer line replacement is about a third of a sewer line project. And I, and really, Jimmy and I talk about how, you know, really you wanna be doing sewer projects every year. You know, you keep track of where the problems areas are. Uh, because I can tell you, when you when you have to call up Hardigan or have to call up somebody and spend a bunch of money to open up a pipe, I'd 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 rather put the money into the pipe. And so that we're about out. And so on the one hand, when I put this when I put the sewer department budget together, I can assure you that. Uh, uh, it won't be about building a surplus. It'll be about putting more money, uh, trying to replenish the sewer line replacement fund. So, um, I don't really have anything other than other than that. That's that one. And uh, uh, other other topics. I uh, I don't have any other topics for you. <laughs> I don't have any. And I don't have a mayor's report. Lol. So uh, hold on. Hold on. So anyway, so uh, based on your calendar, the uh, the next me uh, one of the things the next meeting uh, on the twenty fourth, uh, uh, George has requested. I haven't talked to Rennie about this, Jeff, but you know, George, you know, has a recognition evening that he likes to likes to do on an annual basis, and we have. Uh, I'll say more than tentatively scheduled it for the 24th and so obviously on the 24th you you know if we have that recognition uh, 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 ceremony if you will it usually takes a good half hour we have the public hearing already advertised for the zoning regulations uh, and your calendar shows that the swimming pool budget uh, will be uh, uh, on your agenda as well so there's a pretty good you got a pretty good plate and we have the personnel policy uh, uh, as well so and city, limits. and city limits as well so bring our yeah. blankies well you know <laughs> anyway I had a four hour school board meeting last night so you know that's gonna be cake okay, okay. great all right I, I have one thing I you're probably aware of this too I, I had a conversation with Joanne Canning yesterday who's a superintendent um, and they are planning a meeting, a community-wide forum, I guess, on the 3rd of May at 6 p.m. in the auditorium. And she wanted me to pass on that we're all invited and welcome to be there. And it's about security. Right? Security. Yeah. 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 Security. Reviewing. What, and apparently over the break, they're going to be installing the, the buzzer system. Yeah, there's a meeting so, on the 19th. At the police station with a few people to kind of go over things and then later in the month or early may there's going to be a tabletop like everybody first responders are going to sit around and say this is what would happen under these circumstances sure. boom, boom, and then reevaluate the whole thing and i think think that there'll be a discussion to follow up saying all right this is this is where we are okay anything else from anyone now i'll make the motion to adjust. great <laughs> Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Great.